here from a slightly different perspective, again we have a two-dimensional array of the monoclinic and centered lattice. Here, from that same perspective, we have a three-dimensional array. Here we have the least symmetric of the crystal uh, lattices, the triclinic system. Here A is not equal to B, it's not equal to C, and alpha is not equal to beta, it's not equal to gamma, it's not equal to 90 degrees. So this is the least symmetric of all the crystal classes. And here we have a two-dimensional array of this type. Here we have another two-dimensional array from a slightly different perspective. Because of the lack of symmetry of the unit cell, when you try to stack the models, it's very difficult to get them to stand up by themselves without falling over. So that's a slight difficulty with this particular crystal class and models thereof. Here we have a three-dimensional array. A little tricky to get to stay still. There we go. Of the triclinic system. This is a two-dimensional array of the rhombohedral or trigonal system. This bears some resemblance to the cubic system in that we have A equals B equals C and that alpha equals beta equals gamma. But in this case, alpha, beta, and gamma are not 90 degrees. Here we have a more three-dimensional array of rhombohedral a.k.a. trigonal lattices. Here we have a two-dimensional array of the hexagonal lattice. For the hexagonal lattice, a equals B is not equal to C. Alpha equals beta equals 90 degrees, and gamma is 120 degrees. One of the interesting things about the hexagonal unit cell is that the unit cell is not itself hexagonal. It is a rhombohedral. But when we uh, display a series of the lattices together, we can see the hexagonal structure. You can actually see the six-fold symmetry more clearly when you put several of the unit cells together. Here we have a more three-dimensional arrangement of the hexagonal unit cells. Notice that the hexagonal lattice is primitive. There are atoms only at the eight corners of the unit cell. 